Hey, what's up, you all? What is going on? This is a video by Maddie Balls. This is called Artists Who Killed Their Careers Overnight. I'm gonna go ahead and react to this. Uh, I can think of a few. The baby for being homophobic. I know a lot of people got mad at Miley Cyrus um, for their whole like wrecking ball thing or whatever. She was grinding on someone. I don't remember. Who was she grinding on? Was it Robin Thicke? I think so. Uh, yeah, a lot of these artists have ruined their careers overnight, but like the term ruined is a little bit of an exaggeration. These people who get canceled never really stay canceled. So there's that, you know, Anywho, let's go ahead and watch it get into it. This is a long Thank video, 20 minutes. I'm going to uh, speed this up a little bit. Revoked to having one of the most tweeted about and embarrassing performances ever. These are artists who ruin their careers with just one performance, starting off with Millie Vanilli. Who? Millie Vanilli was a duo whose career was built on two of them. men, Robin Fab, met at a dance seminar in Munich back in 1988. They quickly became friends as they shared common musical goals, so they began searching for work as backup dancers. They also created a demo album that they released under a small German record label that sold just a few thousand They copies. look like demo, though, the, uh, the crackhead twins, who then decided to invite them out to meet with him. Frank the, was in the process um, of creating a star group, and he needed Robin Fab to do it. But he I was going to say something and then correlate them to the twins from The Matrix. If you know, you know, but never mind. It's too much of a brain no reach right now. What was inside of that contract? Rob had said, We lived in a project, we had no money, we wanted to be stars. Little did they know that within that contract was something that stipulated that Rob and Fab would not be the ones singing on their own songs. Oh. At that moment in our lives, we couldn't think better or wiser. We were 22, 23, very naive Germans, French people. German. In the United States, who hardly didn't speak English, who got this offer, you know. And I don't know if I would do it the same same way, but probably maybe I would. When Frank invited them to the studio, he had them sing a song called Girl You Know It's True and said he wasn't impressed by their singing. So the song they were originally singing was completed by the studio singers Charles Shaw, John Davis, Brad Howell, Jody Rocco, and Linda Rocco. But since Frank had them sign the contract, he had complete control of the two. He came up with the name oh, not complete and began control. The Surprisingly enough, this actually wasn't Frank's first rodeo. He had done the exact same thing with a group called Boney M, which had a frontman named Bobby Farrell who was lip syncing vocals and dancing while other people, including Frank himself, sang in the background. Rob said Frank was singing point, in the background, so you manage it and you doing the singing. That's wow. Under a contract. Pretty quickly, the group began touring, lip syncing to tracks that were already recorded by the studio singers. The main reason that Frank actually recruited them was for their star image, their looks, their dancing, and their style. But the lip syncing was an issue for the two right away. Rob said he would ask Frank, when are we going to be allowed to give some artistic input? And he would say, yeah, yeah, but right now we need you to go out and do promotion. Of course, you'll get to do it. Just work with us. Their first song, Interesting. Called they were slaves. The song he had to Got do it. Sing back when he signed them was a hit in Germany. Then Frank began working on their debut album. They look like, um, in late 1988. what's Robin that Fab vampire? Would never have their voices on a Millie Vanilli song, but instead they were being strung along by Frank with fake promises, along with the pressure of having a record contract dangled over their heads. There's a vampire from Twilight, the black one. They look like them. With five songs hitting the Billboard Hot 100. Three of these songs actually- He also looks one, like that that one guy too. from that like viral uh tiktok video him right here y'all do y'all know he's like in the forest talking about whatever he had like a, a, a funny <laughs> weird looking face big eyeballs like light brown hazel eyes and then the white chick runs by and she's like excuse me and then he looks at her and then she screams like ah like oh my god something like that and he could see who's on talking like she just wasn't didn't scream that's what they look like five songs hitting the billboard. yeah i've never heard of these three people. of these songs actually made it to number one and by 1990 the album was six times platinum and it even went diamond in canada then oh. at the 32nd grammy awards in 1990 they won their first and last grammy for they got a grammy Millie Vanilli, Vanilli was on top of the world they finally had they, they, they well, won it, but it on top of the world they won grammy that's okay last. for a while some people had been skeptical of whether or not they were actually the ones singing because they when weren't. they did interviews their english wasn't great which had people second guessing if they could really be the ones singing before they mm -hmm. won their grammy in july of 1989 Millie Vanilli were caught in the act at an mtv arena tour when their vocal track glitched and kept repeating. Ooh. Nah, someone set them up. At that someone point, the set them up. Was really 100%. Up, and they easily could have just been explained away with them saying they had a background track like many people do, but other people began coming out and saying that they weren't the real singers. Background singer Charles Shaw wasn't credited in the American release of Millie Vanilli's album, so he claimed that he was one of three vocalists adding fuel to the Millie Vanilli fire. Finally, after the statement from Charles Shaw and the botched performance, on November 14th of 1990, Frank said he fired the group and admitted that they didn't sing on any of their songs. Mm. Shortly after this, Millie Vanilli had a press conference where they had their Grammy revoked, which is the first and only 
time that this has ever happened. Oh. However, on the bright side, the man who was actually taking away their Grammy decided to give a speech and talk about how vocally talented Rob and Fab were, acknowledging that they could sing but were instead being held back by their label. But I do know that these men are able to do what was required of them to make that record and they were told not to and that's it. By whom, I don't know, but I do know that they are entirely capable. As a matter of fact, they can make a better recording than the one that was made, as far as I'm concerned. During the press conference, they explained their side of the story and their experience with Frank. But unfortunately, since they were the face of Millie Vanilli, the public criticized them much more than their labels and managers. They of tried course. to release an album under the name Robin Fab in 1993, but it completely flopped, performing just as well as their demo album years prior. The two were struggling, thinking that despite the lies, the public would understand them and give them a second chance, but no. it never happened. On top of that, Robin Fab were in financial ruin following the Millie Vanilli scandal. That's and unfortunate so for them millions of dollars are being made yeah. you guys are doing these major tours you guys are on tv you guys have these singles how much are you guys profiting yourselves well, by the time the first album is is now done and the grammy's I won and everything i can't give you any precise number but hear me out he blocked everything because of mm. the fight we had so the only way we could make our money was on the road and tour in america so you weren't making royalties off man, that dude was holding everything because of their issues wow. with Frank and their poor contract robin fab hardly made any money for millie vanilli and all of these terrible circumstances did not do well for their mental health and rob in particular began to struggle with drugs and started committing crimes oh, in a no. final attempt to gain some relevancy the two swallowed their pride and tried to work with frank again but it was too late they created an album called back and in attack and were going to release it in 1998 but it was canceled after rob's body was found in a hotel in frankfurt germany he had passed away at the age of 32 because of an overdose. The oh, story no. of Millie Vanilli is a tragic one, especially because the man who should have been blamed, Frank Farian, was able to make right. Robin much more money and much less of the criticism. I've covered That's Robin Thicke before and how multiple things such as his cringy breakup album aided in ruining his career, but his VMA performance with Miley Cyrus was definitely one of the leading factors. So let's set the stage for this performance. Yeah, it was Robin Thicke. Robin Thicke had spent over seven long years steadily releasing music and growing his fan base, collaborating with artists like Lil Wayne, Snoop Dogg, Jay-Z, Nicki Minaj, Pharrell, and more. He was fairly successful in the industry, but all of that success would pale in comparison to when he released the song Blurred Lines with Pharrell. Blurred Lines! As many of you probably know, this song was a smash hit. Did he get sued for the song? Diamond and the 13th biggest song of the last decade. However, there was also a lot of controversy surrounding the song. The idea of the Blurred Lines was understood by listeners as Blurred Lines of Consent, and many people attacked Robin for this song, supposedly promoting rape culture. Some people have even called it the most controversial song of the decade. The song was actually mm. mostly written by Pharrell, who said that the song has nothing to do with sex and is actually about being rejected. And then there was also a being copyright rejected. infringement issue as the song sounded very similar to Marvin Gaye's song, Got to Give It Up, which just added fuel to the fire that was the hatred for Robin Thicke. People really did not like Robin Thicke, thinking that he was some sort of promoting Yeah, scumbag. didn't they get sued for this and lose the lawsuit? Robin Thicke. He just seemed like a douchebag. There was just a vibe coming off of him. A mildly, but tangibly repellent something that made people unhappy when he was happy and happy when he wasn't it's hard to describe that's, rough, that's very really weird not like him at the time but i remember being people are so miserable tons of adults talk about how awful of a guy he was regardless of the hate blurred lines was doing very well and remained in the upper echelon of the billboard hot 100 for 12 weeks but then it came crashing down on august oh, no. 25th of 2013 robin thick and miley cyrus went out on stage during the 2013 mtv video music awards to perform the song blurred lines miley started touching robin's nuts with this foam finger twerking on him and doing all sorts of sexual dancing that yeah. left the audience kind of confused this may not really seem like a very big deal confused. to us now but back then people were freaking out it became a huge controversy with parents across the country losing their minds news outlets reporting on it as a train wreck in the classic sense of the word as the audience reaction seemed to be a mix of confusion dismay and horror in a cocktail of embarrassment again looking back it doesn't seem that crazy it was actually one of the most tweeted about events ever with over 300,000 tweets being posted about it per minute the two immediately began to face backlash people already hated robin and i don't like something stuck more, between my teeth i'm gonna have to floss from disney channel and toys R Us discontinued all of the hannah montana toys but in the end it worked out for her as she gained over 200,000 Twitter followers from it and over 90,000 downloads on her latest song, Wrecking Ball, which was even more yeah. scandalous than the performance. Miley embraced the like and used it to but Robin ball. was plummeting. After the VMAs, there were pictures of Robin grabbing some girls behind, which was a big issue since he had been married to Paula Patton. They had been married for Ooh. nine years and been together for a total of 21 years. They had a very public relationship as she was also an actor slash model and yeah, she was he definitely on her and was in his music videos. Following this photo, she filed for divorce, alleging infidelity, as she should. abuse, and drug abuse. After they got divorced, Robin decided to write an album called Paula, which wasn't even a breakup album, Not but more Paula. so just him begging for her to come back. The album sold 158 copies no. in Australia, 530 copies in the UK, and 24,000 in the United States. It was pretty embarrassing and cringy. Very I embarrassing. actually detailed this whole thing in my video called Artists Who Ruin Their Careers with One Album, so feel free to check that out after this Chance one. So obviously the, the VMA performance wasn't the only factor in Robin's career being ruined, but the performance with Miley on top of the Blurred Lines controversy and his very public divorce all led to the public's strong disdain for Robin Thicke. Yeah, all my fans at the show, the gay ones and the straight ones, we turned
The baby is probably one of the no, most he, like, very homophobic? as he went on a strange rant during his show at Rolling Loud. The baby has been in a multitude of controversies throughout his career. One of the biggest ones being when he shot and killed a man in Walmart back in 2018. The case was dropped as he claimed self-defense, but he also got a little flack for using the news segment where they covered the shooting in one of his music videos. However, after that, the baby began killing it in 2019 and 2020. No pun intended. He released I know he like killed Shug, someone. Why is he not in jail? He was dominating the radio and had multiple hits on his hands. He was doing features with people like Jack Harlow, Pop Smoke, Chance the Rapper, J. Cole. Oh no. Oh. solidifying himself as one of the hardest rappers out but then at a live show his career took a turn for the worse on the last day of rolling loud miami in 2021 daybaby for some strange reason decided to start talking about aids and gay dudes i've actually never heard this clip Fellas, lights up. Fellas, if you ain't sucking dick and dick in the parking lot, put your cell phone like that. Let's be real about this shit. Yeah, keep it fucking real. Some of y'all niggas Let's be real. Let's be real. Imagine what prompted him to say this at a concert. It sounded like he was sucking dick. He wanted his dick to get sucked by men. That's what it sounded like to me. And then who was this on the background mic saying, let's keep it real. What's happening? What's happening? What prompted this? Mistake. Many fans said that this wasn't homophobic, but many others thought it was very offensive, which led to it is. immediate backlash. He quickly responded on an Instagram story. Me and all my fans at the show, the gay ones and the straight ones, we turned the f up. I'm so my boy that was at the front of the stage left over there by where I jumped at. Asked him, he got clips all on it. The whole night was recorded. We were turned the whole night. My boy had the crop top on, front row. Yeah, out there in that, in that jungle, in that water. But even after doubling down and talking about how people didn't get it because it was a live show, the what are you talking about? many artists like Dua Lipa, Elton John, Demi Lovato, Questlove, and more spoke out against the baby's performance. The baby then apologized on Twitter, but the controversy yeah, I want your apology. Song, Dua Lipa was removed from the radio. Clothing brand Boohoo Man ended their collaboration with him. He was dropped mm. by Lollapalooza, Period. dropped by the Governor's Ball, and Period. many more bad things happened to his career. Following all of that, he issued a formal yeah, apology watch your on mouth. Instagram on August second, in which he said, "I want to apologize to the LGBTQ plus community for the hurtful and triggering." comments i made again i apologize for my misinformed comments about hiv slash aids and i know education on this is this is a very doctored up Although response this apology, he did a bunch of stuff that made people think it was pretty disingenuous he I ain't, if, whatever i say i ain't apologize for right shit because i said what i said and i mean what i said because of all this he lost out on a lot of opportunities and the rolling loud performance was definitely one of the biggest blows to the baby's career but his downfall didn't actually stop there he had a very public beef with his girlfriend danny lay fought her brother at a bowling alley got curved oh. while trying to kiss a fan and then had it happen again a month later shot in intruder at his house and punched his own artist wisdom in the face all of this led to the baby becoming some sort of meme not too many people were taking him seriously oh this nigga is crazy as well as throw him in jail nominated when in august of 2022 he had to cancel a show in new orleans because apparently he only sold 500 only tickets 500 tickets it was pretty embarrassing and had everyone that is embarrassing off. of course he did recently have that one song on tiktok called shake some pop off but since the rolling loud controversy Sexy and everything else that went along with it the baby's career has not been makes sense hot. his last <laughs> real hit was in 2020 with the song rockstar <laughs> and he hasn't had one since i also want to point out that this was around the time that everyone was saying his flow sounded the same and he was just making the same song over and over again so that definitely did not help his career i actually did a full video on this topic last year where i made the assumption that he made a lot of these poor decisions and got into a lot of these are you representing your other videos a lot the last 10 12 years i've enjoyed such a degree michelle shocked who's this now, michelle shocked is a folk singer who was never really super popular so i'm sure most right. of myself included aren't really familiar with her At but all. i absolutely had to include her on this list because Why? her concert performance was so strange and everything following was so crazy she had to be on here. So Michelle okay. Shock is a folk singer who began her career at a young age. She first began seeing success in she got a with her strong debut album, job. Shock. The debut single Anchorage even charted on the Billboard Hot 100. She continued releasing music and garnered herself a decent sized fan base. Again, she was never super popular, but she did have a good enough following to throw shows and do tours throughout the country. In 1989, she okay. joked in an interview that she might be lesbian. Now this may seem like random information, but it is important <laughs> joke, girl. because over the course of her career, <laughs> fans always speculated about her sexuality. She said in an interview in 1990, I would like a much broader definition for myself i resent like hell that i was maybe 18 years old before i even heard the l word i mean that's understood growing up in a sheltered mormon environment but it would have made all the difference for me had i grown up knowing that the reason i didn't fit in was because they hadn't told me there were more categories to fit into so basically it seemed like she was saying she didn't want to fit into any one label when it came to her sexuality and the reason it's important to know this is because she would go on an anti-gay tirade that would ruin her career an event oh. that would shadow the future was at a christian event called the wild goose festival and when an audience member asked about her thoughts on homosexuality they got the pride said, pride. what the wild goose they festival. have have the pride flag right here in the back. Is this not the pride flag? 
What's when happening? Never asked about her thoughts on homosexuality. She said, "Who drafted me as a gay icon? You were looking at the world's greatest homophobe. Ask God what he thinks." Of course, this surprised many fans who thought she was a lesbian, and a lot of people kind of felt betrayed. Surprisingly, I mean... though, she didn't really get much backlash for this, but the rants would soon continue. In 2013, while performing at a nightclub in San Francisco, Michelle went on a rant about same-sex marriage and apparently said, "God hates that." That's a alleged a quote, a quote that is being attributed to her. Who the show is this? Began complaining and tweeting about it, and she got kicked off of the stage. Then the rest of her tour was canceled. At first, for a while, she. She straight up denied that she said any of that, but then she said that people misunderstood her and that she said some of God's followers believe that. And finally, she did an interview with Piers Morgan where after beating around the bush for two minutes, she finally said that she wasn't homophobic. Are you homophobic? Yeah, on the on the um, on the surface it sounds really bad. So you're not homophobic. If you want to keep this simple for the audience, let me just give you a straight. No, I'm not homophobic. Then bitch, just say that. What? Girl, bye. How strange. much so love we got to her? her oh, okay. While she was in the midst of this controversy, she also protested for her right of free speech by sitting outside the venue of one of her canceled shows in a very weird outfit. She's dressed in a white jumpsuit. Completely now she dresses as the fine. KKK. I done seen enough. Girl, go to hell. Anywho, yeah, this is not surprising. Uh, I remember a lot of people trying to cancel the baby. I think... Um, well, you talk about Miley Cyrus, but I think Miley Cyrus is very successful. I don't know about Robin Thicke. I know he got sued, though. Uh, Millie Vanilli, I ain't never heard of these people. Anywho, I will uh, have a link to Maddie's video in the comment section. I mean, in the description of my video, not in the comment section. And yeah, that's about it for me. These artists killed their careers overnight. Peace out. Girl, do better.